fears. We all experience them. Fear is that feeling that something is dangerous or is a threat or is going to cause pain. Fear is human nature, though. We need it for our survival. But too much fear, and it becomes a problem in everyday life. So, a couple questions for you all. Show of hands, who here is afraid of spiders? <clears throat> Not too many, I'm a little surprised by that. How many people are afraid of heights? <laughs> right there with you. <clears throat> and who is afraid of public speaking? <clears throat> the most. <clears throat> As humans, we have been trying to find a cure for fears, to become fearless, if you will. We've been doing this for decades, centuries even. Yet, we haven't really found that catch-all cure yet, have we? We've tried a lot of different techniques and a lot of different styles for overcoming fears. And one of the most effective ones is this, theory, is this technique called exposure therapy. As the name states, you are exposed to your fear in an increasing and gradual amount so that eventually you're not that fearful. So for example, if you are afraid of spiders, this would be for all of you out there, you might start with this like cute little stuffed spider until, until you're comfortable with it. And then it would move up to a more realistic plastic spider. And then pictures of real spiders. And then maybe an actual real spider in the same room as you, like maybe a little one. Then a bigger one. With the end goal being that you can go about your daily duties and not be afraid of that spider, and not having your fear stop you. Exposure therapy is limiting, however. For example, what happens if you're afraid of flying? It's really expensive to have to fly back and forth, you and your therapist, <laughs> to actually have to, to, to get proper exposure. Or what happens if you have a social anxiety? How do you create a social experience that can be controlled for proper exposure? Exposure therapy can cause financial and logistical nightmares, but not anymore. It's the 21st century. It's, in fact, 2018. No fear now is incurable. We have virtual reality. My name is Joe Raddick, and I am a virtual reality developer. And I'm here to say, look out, phobias, because virtual reality <laughs> is going to cure you. <laughs> so for those of you who have no idea how virtual reality works, here's a really quick synopsis. <coughs> you basically get what I essentially call a very expensive pair of ski goggles. Inside of these ski goggles are a couple of screens. And they project a distorted view of the virtual world that you're in. Then a very special and powerful pair of lenses undistorts that view. So what you're seeing is a perfectly scaled, roughly, 3D representation of the virtual world all around you. You may have seen virtual reality headsets in your grocery store, Best Buy, airport gift lounge. I know I've seen them all over in my travels. Some use a phone. Others use a powerful PC. But regardless of the headset you use, they all have one thing in common. 
you're fully immersed. So for example, if you are in an experience about dinosaurs, your active conscious is looking around and is actively thinking, holy crap, that's an actual dinosaur! <laughs> that's ridiculous! Dinosaurs have been dead for millions of years. And for being some of the most intelligent creatures on Earth, that makes us look pretty dumb. <laughs> but that's OK, because we need this to help to begin to cure fears. A fellow virtual reality developer, goes by the name of Teresa Duringer, has a fear of flying. I can relate, I'm sure many of us can too. She gets rather uncomfortable before and during a flight. So she ran an experiment on herself. She thought that if she played some virtual reality games with her mobile virtual reality headset, she could think, she could trick her brain into thinking that she wasn't hurtling through the air at a few hundred miles an hour in an aluminum can. <laughs> so she did this. And after her first flight, she noticed a noticeably less amount of discomfort. <laughs> Our brain's really not that hard to trick when you think about it. We've believed things that aren't real for years. Performance magic being a very early example of this. Researchers have studied this and how the brain can fall for some of the silliest things. And in one study, they, crea they created a prosthetic arm. They then asked a subject to come and sit at a table. And the subject put both their hands on the table. Their right hand, much like this, would be visible to them. Their left hand would be behind a small wall out of view, with a cloth covering the transition from their body to the prosthetic hand, which was in view on the other side of the wall. <laughs> a researcher would then take two brushes, well, paint brushes, and would start to brush both the visible prosthetic hand and the, invis and the hidden hand. This would go on for some time, probably with questions from the researcher to the subject, asking about what they're thinking, what they were doing, just generally getting them comfortable, until suddenly a second researcher would come and stab the prosthetic hand with a fork. <laughs> Disturbing and a little funny, yes. <laughs> but it showed an interesting response. <coughs> Excuse me. Subjects reacted as if their own hand had been stabbed, reeling back to inspect their perfectly unpunctured hand. So this is interesting because now we know that not only does our brain think that fake is real, it also now knows, now we also know that it can respond to these fake and virtual threats as if they were real. Let's apply this to virtual reality. There's a very simple and very interesting virtual reality experience called Richie's Plank Experience. It's very simple. You're stand, you start off standing in an elevator going up a large skyscraper. When you reach the top floor, the elevator's door open, and in front of you is a nice long two meter plank, overlooking a few hundred foot drop. 
You start walking out on that plank and your brain, despite knowing that you are firmly rooted on the ground and not 100 feet up, your brain is thinking, ah! <laughs> we believe what we see. And what we see controls us. A fun little aside. A couple years ago, back when, uh, before the launch of the commercial and mainstream hits of uh, the virtual reality headsets, back when people like myself were first exploring the possibilities of virtual reality, we, dis we discovered something that we called phantom furniture. We believed that the chairs, desks, walls, floors, ceilings, everything in experiences, virtual reality experiences that we were creating ourselves, were real. So we'd be in our virtual reality headsets walking around a scene that we had just worked on, lean up against a virtual wall, only to fall to the floor. This happened too when you, we were putting down our headsets and our controllers. We put them down onto a table only to soon after hear a little thud. <laughs> Fortunately, the developer kits were rugged enough that there was minimal damage, and so it was still mostly funny. <laughs> so we've established that virtual reality is really immersive. So surely you must be thinking, Hasn't anybody done something yet to help humanity and use this power for good? Yes, actually, many. One of these is called Fearless. It is an application on the Oculus Store. So if you have a virtual reality headset or get one that uses um, Oculus virtual reality, you can purchase it. And it takes a user through exposure therapy for a wide variety of phobias. And since it is in virtual reality, we can now reach and use and treat much more phobias than we could before. We could control these, ex these therapies with much finer control because we're building them ourselves and we still get better results. <clears throat> Virtual reality can help you overcome fears and anxiety. And I would know I have generalized anxiety disorder. And I'm afraid of public speaking. It's ironic, I know, that I'm up here on stage giving you this talk, but it's true. Much like Teresa, I get uncomfortable before and during a talk. So I thought I would run an experiment on myself for this one. I gave this talk and others to strangers in virtual reality on a virtual reality social platform on a stage much similar to this one. I compared how I felt two times when I gave talks outside of virtual reality before I started using virtual reality. And I'm actually quite happy to say that I'm standing up here talking to you all with very minimal discomfort. It worked! <laughs> Virtual reality isn't this new Silicon Valley nerd tech fad that's just going to come and go. It's a new medium with infinite possibilities. It's a powerful tool for human health and psychology. I mean, it tricks our brain into thinking that fake is real. We can now overcome our fears in the comfort of our own homes, 
or therapist offices. It is extremely helpful to see a professional when going through this type of therapy, even in virtual reality. It may be virtual, but its results are anything but. Thank you.